Hi, uh, welcome to part four of the algebra flip chart, and this one's called Linear Equations and Inequalities. So remember, linear, the first four letters of that is line, so that's really what we're talking about is linear equations. And in linear equations, a lot of times you talk about this tilt of a line, and the tilt of the line is called the slope. And the shortcut way to write the word slope is the letter M. We always say that's because of mountains. I'm um, not really sure why. Um, it is the rise over the run. So it's the change in the y's over the change in the x's. So that's slope. Remember, there's um, uh, four different kinds of slope. There's the slope that rises to the right, which is positive slope. There's the kind that falls to the right, which is negative slope. There's ones that are completely flat, and they have, if you go skiing on a flat surface, it's zero amount of fun. So M equals zero. And remember that is Y equaling a number. And if it's a vertical line, like trying to ski down a cliff, remember you're gonna die and all your parts are gonna be undefined all over the side of the mountain. So the slope, is undefined. And another name for undefined is no slope. No breath, no life. Undefined body parts. Um, let's see, talking about lines, there's some also, the lines like this one and this one are gonna have x-intercepts and y-intercepts. Um, one like this one's only gonna have a y-intercept of whatever that number was. And one like this, where it's x equaling a number, it's going to have an x-intercept of whatever number that is. It won't have a y-intercept. So the x-intercept, the x-intercept is the is where it crosses the x-axis. And obviously, if I write faster than you, you can always pause. Um, but I like as a better definition, it's the value of x when y equals zero. I like that as a better definition because it tells you what to do. The y-intercept, obviously, is where it crosses the y-axis. But again, again, I like the value of y when x equals zero. Also, in the slope-intercept form, which we're gonna talk about in a second, in y equals mx plus b, which is like the easiest form, if y is alone, this number right here is the slope, because remember we called that m, um, and the b is the y-intercept. And they couldn't say y, because it already has a y, and they say b because it's the y-intercept. If they had said a, it would have been the x-intercept, but it's not. It's the y-intercept. So there are um, three different forms. So we already talked about that one, but let's go ahead and do it. So the forms of equations of lines. So the easiest form is, which a lot of y'all like to do a lot, is called slope-intercept which we just talked about, and that's just y equals mx plus b. And again, we already talked about that this is the slope, and this is the y-intercept. Okay, the one that you could use all the time, though, is point-slope. It's the one that's a little bit more complicated, but it works all the time, um, except in uh, vertical lines. But y minus y1 equals m times the quantity of x minus x1, where m is still the slope, and x1 comma y1 is the point. So you don't plug in for x and y, you plug in for x1 and y1 right there. And then the last form is called standard form, and the only thing that standard form is really good for is if you're going to graph by x and y intercepts, like up here. Um, but the standard form is ax plus by equals c, and it has a lot of rules. So a, b, and c all have to be integers, 
So nobody gets to have fractions or decimals. A has to be positive. And um, there can't be a greatest common factor for A, B, and C other than one. So that's uh, the, other, the rules for the standard form. So if it's in standard form, like it said 2x plus 3y equals 12, and you want to know what's the x-intercept, you would put in 0 for y, and you could find the x-intercept. And then if you want to know the y-intercept, put it in 0 for x, and you could find the y-intercept. And then you put those two dots and connect the dots, extend, put arrows, and it's a really easy way to graph if it's in standard form. But I think most of y'all like that form the best. Okay, the last thing it says is inequality. So when you graph lines, so if it said say it said y equals 2x minus 1. That's a straight line. And, well, all lines are straight, but still. Um, so let's draw a little graph. So x and y. And we don't need too many numbers. Just put like that. All right. And this says y equals 2x minus 1. So the y-intercept's negative 1. So you graph that first. And then the slope is 2. So go up to right one, put a dot, up to right one, put a dot, or down to left one, put a dot. And then take a straight edge. I guess I should have used the straight edge when I was drawing my X and Y graph too. And you extend and you put arrows. Now, what if it had said the exact same thing, but it said Y is greater than two X minus one. So you would still draw that boundary line but since it's greater than, and there's no equal sign underneath that, then it's a dashed boundary line. So it still crosses at negative one. It still has slope of two. Down two. But when you do it, you put a dashed line because the boundary line is not included. So it's like that. So it's crossing a little bit to the left of the origin right here. Sorry, I didn't draw very well. That should not look like it goes through the origin. So make sure on yours it doesn't. So now I need to shade on one side or the other. This one doesn't shade because it's equal to, but this one shades because it's greater than. So zero comma zero is right there. So I could plug in zero comma zero, and if it works, I'm gonna shade where zero zero is. If it doesn't, I'm gonna shade the other way. So let's see, is zero really bigger than two times zero minus one? Is zero really bigger than negative one? Oops. And the answer is yes. So I'm gonna shade on the side where zero, zero is. If I had tried three comma zero and I'd put three here and zero here, it would have been a no. And so I wouldn't have shaded on this side, I shade on that side. Um, I guess we'll just do one more. So say it said y is greater than or equal to, let's just say one, make it kind of small. So again, so you got an X and you got a Y, and we don't need a lot of numbers. So I would go to Y equals one, and it's Y equals one. So the Y value is one over and over and over. So it's a horizontal line. And then you have to ask yourself, is it shaded or solid? Is it dashed or solid, excuse me? and it is solid because there's a line underneath it. So the line itself is included. 